Hello. Sun Hill Police, Mr. Nichols, will you come to the door, please? Stop mucking around. This is important. A woman so much as breaks her fingernail and you're round here hassling me. Yeah, life's a bitch, isn't it, Owen, when you got previous? What do you want? Sit down. How you been keeping since your release? Yeah, yeah, just great, thanks. Get on with it. Keep up with the local news, do you? Women frightened to walk the streets? Right. I get it. You think I'm one of them two fellas, don't you? So I'll tell you something, Owen. It's like you never went away. I've had counselling. I don't need to assert myself like that anymore. Of course you don't. That's why you try to creep out the back when you saw us coming. I only try and avoid you because I know what you're like, all right? I, I haven't got any mates. I haven't done note. Simple solution, yeah? You've got my DNA in your database. Check it. Nice idea, Owen. Unfortunately, our two suspects are practicing what you might call safe rape. Yeah, well, it makes sense these days. Go ahead. Diseases you can catch. It's also pretty much what you'd expect if they knew their DNA was on file. I can't win either way, can I? Nick me if you want. Bang us up in the self at night. Be nice to have someone bring my breakfast. I haven't done out. And it's not going to stop them two blokes you're looking for either. Gov. A uniform have just picked a woman up in Galatas Street. Sounds like victim number four. I didn't think it was him anyway. Hello. I'm Polly Page. I've been specially trained to deal with these situations. I'm going to be your chaperone. <laughs> My chaperone? What, like I'm back in Victorian times or something? Is there anyone you'd like me to contact for you? Tell them what's happened. Um, I live with someone. Nick. Nick Pearson. I don't want him down here, though. Just tell him. Just... Let's hear it, George. Right, her name's Kirsty Bennett, Gov. She's 28 years old, lives with her boyfriend, works in the city. She's walking home from the underground and there's this car parked on Elverton Avenue. No lights, but bonnet up. Two blokes doing something with the engine. Any idea what kind of car? Well, she said it was dark blue with squarish headlamps. A bit like this Ford Orion. Now, as she walks past, one of them says, excuse me. She turns around and they throw this blue plastic bag or, or sack thing over her head. Now, she shouts, screams and struggles, but they punch her a couple of times throw her into the car. One of them gets in the back with her and the other one drives. Could you tell which one was which? Only that the rapist was the passenger, sir. Did he have his knife on him again? Yeah. No, he forced her into the car with him. Didn't cut that one? No. Now, the journey only lasts a couple of minutes. Then they drag her out of the car, across the waste ground, still with this, this plastic sack over her head, and she's too frightened to resist or, or to try and run away. Then the driver holds her down, passenger puts on a condom and, uh, well, doesn't last very long. No, it never does with this one. He can hardly contain himself. But the driver didn't assault her. No, Gov, just uh, this creep here. And pretty badly by the sounds of things as well. It sounds like he's developing a real taste for it. Yeah, funny thing is, the driver's turned into a real gentleman. Now all he wants to do is hold hands. Uh, once they've finished, they told her to stay where she was and not to move, which she did. She then dressed herself as best she could and made her way over to Galata Street, where we picked her up. Do we know the exact location yet? Well, she reckons it was uh, under the trees, behind the playground. I'm sorry, Kirsty. I'm, I'm going to be as gentle as I can. 
If you could just stay still, then it really won't take a moment. That's it. Yeah, now just try and relax. Are you okay, Kirsty? If it helps catch the bastards, I'll be fine. We've got some stuff down here, but I'm not sure how relevant it is. These rapists are getting younger every day. There's more over here, Gov. All right, we'll bag it all up, the lot. And get it taped off. Oh, yeah, and let's get one of you authorised to stay in guard till the morning. I'm looking for a volunteer. Well done, Sam. Don't worry, mate. I'll pop back every hour or so. Make sure you don't get too lonely. Yeah, you bring him a cup of coffee and all. That was the only good look I got at the one raping me. When the sack or whatever it was rode up. The rest of the time it was just glimpses of his feet, his legs, his hands, his belt buckle. Would you recognise him if you saw him again? Oh, yeah. But not the driver? Um, he was about the same age, same sort of size as his mate. And... <clears throat> had a plaster on his hand. On the palm of his right hand. A plaster? Yeah, like one of those fabric ones, you know, that you cut off the strip. Probably came to about there on his hand. That's good. <laughs> I think I'd find something better to worry about than the state of his hand. What about their voices? Did either of them have an accent? The driver was definitely East End. The one who raped me was... I don't know... posher, better spoken? Excuse me. What kind of things were they saying? You mean apart from bitch, slag and slut? To one another. Um... Drive the car. Hold her properly. Stop her noise, mostly just telling each other what to do. Uh, there's something the driver said, but he said it pretty quietly. Something about, um, Saturn. I think I've seen her in Saturn. What, like Saturn the cloth? No, like the planet Saturn. At least I think that's what he said. His mate just told him to shut up. Well, there's a wine bar called Saturn on Hambleton Green. Oh, God. I've been there. I was there for a drink the other week. But you don't drink there regularly. Well, I don't suppose I'll go there again if these blokes drink there. The driver, the one who said that, he didn't sexually assault you. Well, I expected him to take a turn when his mate had finished, but he didn't. I guess he just liked to watch. This guy wasn't an innocent bystander, you know. He drove the car. He held me down. I mean, he didn't do anything to stop what was happening. Just left me lying there, half naked on the ground. <laughs> they got back in their car and they drove away. They left me there. Hello? Dave? 340 from 416 receiving. Go ahead, Sam. Wait! All units see her ask her in the vicinity of the playground by Galata Street. Attention requested to an IC1 male. He's on foot and I've lost him. Nick Pearson, DC1. Oh, where's Kirsty? Can I see her? Uh, she's in the rape suite at the moment, but I can tell you she's seen a doctor and she's had her injuries treated. Well, is she all right? I mean, you know, within reason? Yeah, I think so. Oh, this is just really freaking me out. I expect this is why she didn't want me down here. Yeah, well, don't worry, Nick. It's not a problem. I feel like I should do something, you know? Like, like going out and finding these blokes and... Well, don't. Leave that to us. We're doing everything we can to catch them. What are we going to do? The chances are you'll help each other. <laughs> She's usually the tough one. <laughs> Look at me. I'm shaking. Any Joey? 
Well, the DSC's had a good look round, but he's found nothing else so far. The way this case is going, I'm surprised he could even find his way to the scene. Seen her in satin. What is this bloke? Some kind of amateur astronomer? Victim statement. No, we reckon it was the satin wine bar he was talking about on Hambleton Green. Kirsty was in there a couple of weeks ago. It's where the Great and Bottle used to be, Gov. It was bought up, converted into something a bit more trendy. And do these blokes drink in there? That's our best lead so far. It's our only lead. So what you reckon, Gov? Swing down there later on? Any excuse for a drink for you, innit? Yeah, we could do. Only trouble is we don't really know what these blokes look like. We might be better off getting one of the victims to try for a group identification. Victim number one, Janet Mason, drunk. Unable to identify either of them. Diana Cole, too traumatised to remember what they look like. And Julie O'Neill, where well, she's convalescing in Sheffield at her parents. Which leaves Kirsty Bennett. Yeah, but you don't want to put her through that yet, do you, Gov? Well, we can't recognise these blokes on my own, Polly. As far as we know, these two might as well be Lauren and Hardy. But not as funny. Even so, how are we going to get these blokes, Paul? They might end up killing someone. That's a fair point. Yeah, but come on, Gov. Well, there's no harm in asking. Well, you don't know that. All she can do is say no. You and Liz, get your heads together. Decide how you're going to play this. So what is it you want me to do? It's called a group identification. Basically, what it involves is going to the wine bar and just looking at the customers. To see if I recognise any of them. You wouldn't be expected to confront them, just point them out. Okay? Kirsty. Shut up a minute, Nick. We'd have officers inside and out, ready to move. I can promise you, you'll be in absolutely no danger at all. My chaperone doesn't think this is a very good idea, does Neither she? Neither do I. I think that you should take some time to think about it. Talk to Nick. I mean, this is something you don't have to rush into. And if I say no? Nothing. No problem at all. But will you catch them? We'll simply pursue other lines of inquiry. What about the other women that has happened to? I mean, are they going to do it as well? Well, unfortunately, none of them feel able to identify their attackers. <laughs> so it's just me. Or maybe the woman they go for next. That's right. But you shouldn't let that be a factor in your decision. You don't have to do this, Kirst. I know I don't have to do it. I don't have to do anything. <sighs> OK. Sort it out, set it up, whatever. I'll do it. You're all right. Wait a minute. No, it's okay. You talked her into it then? Listen, if we're going to catch these blokes, there's no other option. <laughs> That's the impression you gave her, is it? You've been talking to Polly. I'm just imagining the fuss of a bloke had suggested it. Yeah, well, a bloke did suggest it. You're governor. No. Uh, he floated it. You're the one who sold it. Kirsty? Uh, can we have a bottle of this? That's him. The passenger of the driver. The one who raped me. Stay with her! DC Rolton from 469. Suspect heading towards the rear of premises. Uh. Will you get out of my way? I need to get out of here. I'm arresting you for a serious sexual assault. What? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you don't mention when questioned something which you'll later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Well done, Liz. You all right? No, he elbowed it. No, I didn't. What's your name? Sutton. Craig Sutton. Well, Mr Sutton, 
You ready to take our order now? Craig? DCI Burnside. This is DC Henderson, DC Rawton. What? Your son has been arrested, Mr Sutton. What for? They're saying I've raped some woman. What? Women. He's been arrested on suspicion of committing serious sexual assault. No! This is ridiculous. We have authority to search these premises under Section 18 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984. I think we'll uh, start with your room first, Craig. Uh, well, wait a minute, you just can't walk into my house. We're searching for clothes belonging to your son that match those described to us by the victims. I'm sorry for the intrusion. <coughs> what the hell happened? We arrested one of her attackers. You said she'd be all right. I know. I'm sorry. But that's what you said, though. Well, it shook her up more than she expected, more than we expected. I thought you were supposed to be her chaperone. In your own time, Mum. I haven't been able to find the clothes Craig was wearing last night. You any idea where they are? He put them out to be washed. You did them, yeah? What, blue denims, white t-shirt, dark sweatshirt? I'll just get them. We're gonna need his underwear as well. Can I talk to my son for a minute? No, I'm afraid not, Mr. Sun. Then can I talk to you? Not right now, no. This is absolutely ridiculous. What basis do you have with thinking that my son's committed this... whatever it is? Considerable basis, Mr. Sutton. Liz, you got the lock? Yeah. All freshly washed and ironed. Do you have to stand there? You're gonna get your samples, what's your problem? What's he whinging about now? He's shy of when he likes his mate watching. He wouldn't be giving us those samples if he thought they'd do any good, you know. Yeah, well, at least we could. How's Kirsty? Well, she's been throwing up in the sink, if you're interested. Shook her up a bit, did it? Next time you have a bright idea, Liz, keep it to yourself, eh? It was her choice. She didn't have to do it. No, of course she didn't. She didn't! Well, I hope you've got enough to hold him. Yeah, for the time being. If he walks out of here, Liz, you can be the one who tells Kirsty. Problem? <sighs> no, she's just a bit worried about Kirsty. She took it really badly, apparently. Send a bunch of flowers round in the morning. You want the doctor to have a look at your ribs? No, I survive. He didn't like being arrested by a woman, did he? He's not going to like being interviewed by one either. You stayed till the end of the film. I came out of the cinema just before 11. And this was Tuesday night? This was last night. But the programme and screening times are the same for both evenings. Yeah. So you could be describing what you did Tuesday. I told you. On Tuesday night, I was going round pubs, trying to find the bloke who owed me money. So how come a woman has identified you as the man who assaulted her last night? I don't know. And how come you ran away this evening when you saw her? I was running away from you. We're back to this again. My client has already accounted for his actions at the wine bar. Yeah. I'll have to ask around and see how many other people think I look like a debt collector. <laughs> you got a girlfriend, Craig? Not at the moment, no. No girlfriend, you got the pictures on your own. It's fair to say you're a bit of a loner. If you want. You get two evenings off work a week and you say you spend them on your own. Pretty much, yeah. See, that's the trouble with an evening job. When I'm off, everyone else is working. Yeah, it'd be helpful though, wouldn't it? If you had someone who could confirm your whereabouts last night, or any of the other evenings we've asked you about. It'd be very helpful, yeah, but there isn't anyone. Sorry. Let's go back to Tuesday night. You still got the ticket stub? Well, you didn't find it when you tore my room up, so I doubt it. Never mind. And it wasn't Tuesday night I went to the pictures. It was last night. 
See, she can see I'm tired. All she's trying to do is trick me. The problem is, you've made a mistake. And you want to admit no, it. you made the mistake. When you saw the woman that you raped and started running. Big mistake. See, she's had it in for me from the word go. I told you she hit me. You see what she's like. You hit me, actually. No, Craig. We're all getting tired. Perhaps now might be the time to finish for the night. Craig's not tired. He works late. No. You're probably right. Interview terminated at 12.14am. Thank you both very much. Is that it? Can I go home now? I see you've still got your sense of humour, Craig. I like that. Thanks, John. So what time do we kick off in the morning, Gov? Well, the clock's ticking on his detention, so the earlier the better. But Scott and I will be doing the interview. Oh, right. What? Well, I know there was a certain amount of friction in there, Gov, but I didn't think I'd overstep the mark. Did I say you had? No. Well, then don't worry about it. I want you to go and talk to his parents. Try and find out who his mate is. Dig up what you can. Scott, where have we got? Is this to tell us that Craig has been charged with something? Craig's still helping us with our inquiries. It's more for a chat about him. Hello. Well, I doubt if we'll be able to tell you anything that Craig can't tell you himself. Well, we'd simply like to get a sense of how he spends his time, you know, who he sees, what sort of young man he is. Can't you do that by talking to him? Well, to a certain extent, yes, but... So what? Do you expect us to say something that will help you? Or help your son? I can't believe this is happening. Craig isn't being very talkative at the moment. He seems to resent the fact that he's being questioned. I don't blame him. As far as I'm concerned, I think the whole thing's downright stupid. Has he got many friends? Oh, yes, a few, of course. Anyone in particular? We don't pry into his private life. No, but you live in the same house. Well, Craig tends to keep himself to himself. Anyone in general, then? Well, there is that uh, oaf of a boy he works with. What's his name, then? I've no idea. He seems to have ingratiated himself with Craig somehow. Have either of you met him? He phones sometimes, or Craig phones him. We haven't met him. He just pulls up in his car and waits for Craig to come out. This car? Is it a Ford Orion? Possibly. Would you happen to have an address for him? No. Have you got an itemised telephone bill? Go ahead, Lynn. We found Sutton's make of. We've checked his telephone bill. There's loads of calls to the same number, some of them lasting two hours. What are they? In love? His name's Murray Watkins. He lives at 22 Stanby House on the Netherlake Estate. We're on our way there now, Gov. Oh, and guess what? He drives a D-Reg metallic blue Ford Orion. Not anymore, he doesn't. Get it brought into the yard for forensic examination. Will do. Well, Craig, I thought you might find it easier talking to me and DC Henderson. Depends whether he starts accusing me of something I didn't do. Like that woman. Yeah, well, that's the trouble with investigating any kind of sexual assault, Craig. People get so emotional about it. Victims, suspects, police. Yeah, well, what's her name? She got very emotional about it. What we have to do now is concentrate on the facts of the case rather than the feelings. I mean, what a woman can sometimes call rape, a man can easily think of as going a bit too far. Would you agree with that? Maybe. Good. DC Wharton, DC Skase, Sun Hill. Murray! Is this about his car? His car? Yeah, we found it. We weren't aware it was missing. It got nicked. Sorry, you are... Tina Lewis. Who is it? Police. Hurt your hand, Murray. Hey. Oh, yeah. I burnt it at work. What's up? I found your car. Hey. Tina said it was stolen. Oh, yeah. But I haven't really reported it yet. That's all right. <laughs> because we haven't really found it. Huh. When did it go missing? Two or three days ago. You don't sound too sure. Well, I'm not really. When was the last time you saw it? Tuesday night, I think. Yeah, Tuesday around six. 
What? And you haven't reported it yet? Well, I was kind of hoping it would come back. Oh, right, yeah. Sort of like a... like a homing pigeon. <laughs> no, it's the kids on the estate, isn't it? Joyriding and stuff. They nick cars and drive them till they run out of petrol, don't they, teen? Little vandals. How old's the baby, Murray? Eleven months. He's quite big for his age, isn't he, teen? But never mind about the baby. What do you want? Actually, we wanted to have a look at your car. And now we've got to look for the damn thing. As well as a few other things. Eh? Like the claws you were wearing on Wednesday night. A short-bladed pen knife. Murray, do you know Craig's son? Craig? Why? This is all getting a bit confusing. Yeah? Well, let me simplify it for you. You're under arrest for serious sexual assault. Murray Watkins. Is he a friend of yours? He works at the wine bar. He gives me a lift in some evenings. And he's blue Ford Orion. It's blue. I don't know what make it is. Why didn't you mention this last night? You asked me about friends. Murray's more of a... I don't know. Accomplice? Colleague. Yeah. Colleague. I serve up front. He does cleaning up and stuff. If you hadn't gone hacking through the kitchen last night, you'd have seen him. Sorry I missed him. I expect he wondered what was going on. I reckon he had a pretty good idea. So this Murray Watkins, he's like your chauffeur? Yeah. He wears a uniform and a little peaked cap. So how else would you describe him? I don't know. He gives me a lift, yeah? But he's not a friend? No. Not like you mean. Tell us about him. <laughs> well, there's not a lot to tell. He's a fairly normal bloke. He lives with his girlfriend. They've got a kid. I don't know, normal. I hadn't thought of him as a rapist. Good. That's something else we agree on. Don't worry. I'm not coming in with you. I've got another appointment. Why do you think men rape women, Murray? I don't know. They want sex, I suppose. Well, we all want to get laid. But come on, what these rapists really get off on is all the fear and pain they cause. Not all of them. How do you work that out? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe some of them do. Other times it just happens. Murray, we're talking about two blokes abducting women off the streets and sticking bags over their heads. That doesn't just happen. Well, I don't know. Well, stop asking me these stupid questions, will you? So what you're saying is, in certain circumstances, one thing can lead to another. Like if they've both been drinking or something. That'd be one way it could happen. One bloke, one woman, one time. I'll buy that. But we're talking about two blokes here. It could still happen. Two normal blokes, not two psychos. All I'm doing is agreeing with her. Is that your style, Murray? Shrug and go along with someone else's idea. Well, as she says, certain circumstances, if they've been drinking and stuff. Well, let's look at the first incident. Because that's a bit different to the ones that followed. Camperton's nightclub. Wennell Street. Do you know him? I've heard of it. Never been there. Young woman's had a few drinks. Accepts a lift home off a couple of young fellas. When she's in the car, she's messing about with them, having a laugh. Suddenly she changes her mind. Things are getting a bit out of hand. Next thing she knows, she's been raped by two men. Listen, I don't know nothing about it. I don't want to know about it. It's sick. I'll tell you what is sick, Murray. Is that three weeks later, these same two blokes went out and did exactly the same thing, only this time at knife point. Then again, five weeks later and again the night before last. What's interesting, though, is that only in the first incident did the driver actually commit rape himself. The other three times, all he did was help restrain the victims. So? Well, the driver's a normal bloke. He's got a girlfriend. Maybe even a baby. I don't know, maybe his girlfriend's off sex, but he's out with his mates and, well, whatever. Beginning and end of story, you'd think. Only it isn't. What do you think, Murray? All I'm doing is listening. It's his mate who's the problem. He hasn't got a girlfriend. Lives with his parents. He's a bit of a loner. Yeah, but the driver's still in it up to his neck, isn't he? 
Well, not if he comes forward and tells the truth. Maybe he's a bit naive. And he's being blackmailed by his mate into helping him. I mean, OK, he's still be in trouble, but at least people would understand it wasn't his fault. Murray, what do you think about the driver? Do you think he should come forward and tell the truth, or do you think he should keep quiet and take his chances? You'd better ask the driver. I wouldn't know. I'm now showing Murray exhibit DQ2. Do you know what that is? It's a dummy. A baby's dummy. It was found at the scene of the last rape. Any idea how it got there? No. Is it yours? Why would I have a dummy? Because you're a nice bloke. I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you, Murray. Interview terminated at 11.06. Now what? Now? You go home. Really? Well, unless there's anything else you've got to say. Well, no. Thanks for having us. Pleasure is all ours. I thought we were getting somewhere with Watkins. No, he's not going to give himself up that easily. He's got too much to lose. All we had to do was keep the pressure. He'd have given with Sutton eventually. You think he's not under pressure now? What's going on, Gov? I'm like God, Liz. I move in mysterious ways. We haven't got quite enough evidence at the moment. Enough evidence? But he was standing right next to me. I know, but what kind of evidence do you need? <laughs> Look at me! So now he's just walking the streets? Well, he's been freed on bow. Oh, great! Oh, <laughs> that's just great! Look, we will get him, Kirsty. I promise you we will. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, you said that yesterday. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. <laughs> you better go. No, Nick. No. Really. Hi. Wake up, sleeping beauty. Guys, please, go back indoors. No, I'm not discussing it. Go. Go ahead, Liz. Sutton's leaving in a taxi, but if we're going to follow him, we're going to show out to his father. Don't worry about it, Liz. That's fine. Hey! Maybe we should stop and ask his old man what's going on. Just keep going. Oh, he's seen us anyway. He doesn't look too pleased about it. Gov! Craig Sutton's father's in the front office. Thanks, Paul. Oh, Paul? Is he on his own? Yeah. Tell him I'll be right down. Liz? Yes, Gov. Where are you? I'm still outside Hopkins' flat. Sutton hasn't come out yet. Forget Sutton for the time being. I'll send Scott down to take over the watch. I've got a little job for you. Mr Sutton. Is it really necessary to have your officers following my son? Your son is a suspect in an important investigation. Really? I would have thought if he was that much of a suspect, you wouldn't have let him go. He's been freed on bail pending further inquiries. Inquiries or further harassment? If my officers do their job properly, your son won't even know they're there. The only way he will find out, Mr Sutton, is if he does something that warrants arrest, or if you tell him. Are you expecting me to collude in the investigation of my own son? I'm expecting you to cooperate with the investigation into four rapes. Don't be ridiculous! My son hasn't raped anyone. Well, I wish I shared your certainty. This is all the fault of the Watkins boy. 
I knew from the moment he latched on to Craig it would end in trouble. Why? Well, it's obvious, a boy like that. He was only ever going to drag Craig down to his level. I hope you're making further inquiries about him. Are you saying that Murray Watkins is a bad influence on your son? What else could he be? If it wasn't for him, I'm damn sure Craig wouldn't be in this situation. I don't really know what else I can tell you. I'm sorry, Mrs Sutton, but the more information we can collect, the more chance we have of catching the men responsible for these rapes. I think I'd be happier talking to you if my husband was here. Why? Because you could leave him to answer the awkward questions. No, he's just Four a... women have been raped, Mrs Sutton. Yes, I know. Have you any idea what kind of state these women are in? Not really, but I can imagine. Well, their physical injuries are bad enough, but that's nothing. I mean, nothing compared to what they've been going through emotionally. Yeah, I'm sure. It affects every part of their lives, Mrs Sutton, every day. From the minute they get up in the morning and look in the mirror to going to bed and not being able to sleep because of the fear of nightmares. Their relationships suffer. Their work suffers. They can't trust anyone. Please, stop it. Someone's son is responsible for this. Yeah, well, not mine. Are you just saying that, Mrs Sutton, or is that what you really believe? Craig would never hurt anyone. Not like that. Yeah, well, tell yourself that the next time he puts his clothes out to be washed. That's not fair. No, and neither's been forced into a car at knife point. I don't see why having his clothes was so important. Because the tests we could have run on them could have proved once and for all whether Craig was involved in the rapes. Well, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. And had you, would it have made a difference? Of course it would. Well, you're not the first woman in this case to cover up for a man. I'm not covering up for anyone. I mean, Craig's not a rapist. And you'd know he wasn't if... What? No, it's none of my business. If this is going to help your son, I think you'd better tell me. I think that Craig's in a relationship with a girl at the moment. But it's not something he wants people to know about. You know about it, though. Well, only because whenever I want to use the phone, he's on it. Speaking to her. Who? Oh, Craig won't thank me for this. He might in the long run. It's Murray Watkins' girlfriend. Tina Lewis. Scott from Burnside. Get them. Watkins and Sutton, where are they now? Actually, girl, I've just lost them. You've done more of them. Now, they went straight through a snooker roll and out the back. Are you sure they didn't see you? Now, they were arguing pretty violently all the way here. Yeah, but they've probably gone for a car, you dipstick. DCI Burnside from WDC Wharton. Go ahead, Liz. I've got something for you, girl. Look, I've told her and I'll tell you. Murray was with me the nights those women got raped. He ain't done nothing wrong. If I thought he had, then you could arrest him, put him in prison, whatever. That's very comforting. You think I'd want to live with a man like that? Maybe. If he was your only means of support for you and your kid. Yeah, right. What other reason would there be? Look, Murray's always treated me fine. More than fine. Unless, of course... Unless what? Unless you're protecting Murray to protect Craig. What? I'm not protecting anybody. If Murray goes down, chances are he'll take Craig with him. And you'll be left uh, holding the baby, as it were. We know you're on the phone to Craig all the time. So? We just wondered what you talked about. Nothing. Stuff. The weather, what's on telly. For two hours at a time? Maybe we'd better ask Murray. Look, it's got nothing to do with any of this rape business, all right? It's just something Craig's got into his head. And it's between me and him and no one else. You want to tell us about this? Will it shut you up? I doubt it. Craig thinks he's Jason's father. And is he? No. No way. Excuse me for asking, but... Uh... Look, Murray was out working one night. Cray came round and we had too much to drink. And we had sex. Once, okay? Just once. I'm talking like two minutes here. 
And it wasn't rape, it was just a grope on the sofa and that was that. To be honest, I don't think he was very experienced. So he could be Jason's father? No. I've worked it all out and Murray's definitely the dad. But Craig won't have it. Well, that's what the phone calls are about. He just keeps hassling me about it. Does Murray know about this? No. And I don't want him to. Look, Craig can be a real pain. He's never taken no for an answer. But these days, I don't know, he's different. Different? It's like I can handle him having a crush on me. But this is kind of scary. Has he threatened you? Not physically, no. We can get Craig out of your life if you want. Yeah, I know. But you'll take Murray with him, won't you? I love Murray. He's Jason's dad. I'm not going to give him up. Recognise that? We found it trodden into the mud where a woman was brutally raped, Tina. We think Murray went back to collect it, but we don't know. Murray said he'd lost it. I had to get Jason a new one. Where's his car, Tina? I don't know. Tina? He wouldn't tell me. And all I know is that Craig gave him the keys to some sort of garage. I think it's in there. The garage? Yes. We've well, been told that your son has access to a garage. Do you know where that is? I'm looking for a yes or no answer here. Mr. Sutton? Do you mind? Don't tell them anything. I'm beginning to see where your son gets his enlightened view of women from. <laughs> you can't talk to me like that. I can do anything if I put my mind to it. Now, do you want to tell me where this garage is, or do you want me to nick you for obstructing me in the course of my duties? It's a lock-up garage, but it's used more for storage now. It used to belong to my late father, now it belongs to me. And Craig has access to it? Well, I've never thought it necessary to hide the key. It's hanging in the kitchen. What, well, do you want to fetch it? It's not there. It hasn't been there for weeks. You didn't mention it to me. Get your coat. I hope for your sake it's in here. Anyone wants to swear, feel free. Get out on all points on the car. Go! Hey, is that Craig? Stay back, Mr. Sutton. Well, who is it? Yeah, there's still a post, I think. It's Watkins. Get an ambulance! Looks like someone's whacked him over the head with something. I, I don't understand. Where's Craig? He's probably taken the car. But he can't drive! DCI Burnside from Sierra Oscar. Go ahead. Yeah, read the Ford Orion. We've got a possible sighting. A caretaker reports seeing a blue Ford Orion being driven erratically on the Bagford Road by the river. Liz. Scott. Yeah. All units, Bagford Road from 218. We got an IC1 male matching the description. No sign of the vehicle, though. Suspect is running away from us up Bagford Road. Over. <laughs> Give it up, Craig, you're going nowhere. Where's the car? Let's cut the chain, Gov. Is it in there? As if it is! Gov! He's let the handbrake off. Be in 12 foot of water by now, Gov. You're nicked. What for? You haven't got anything. Let's start with littering. How about that? There are only a few problems getting the lifting gear into position. Didn't see the point in hanging around. That uniform down there to sort it out. Yeah. Anyway, any forensic evidence that was in it will be gone by now. Any word from the hospital? Watkins is still unconscious. Fractured skull. 
He still won't have any reason to give up Sutton when he comes round. If he comes round. So can we prove Sutton whacked him? Yeah, if we could submit smugness as evidence. We found traces of blood on his clothes, but he'll have an excuse for that. He'll plead self-defence. CPS will bin it straight away. We can't prove rape. We can't prove assault. We can't even prove taken without the owner's consent. Hello? So after all that, we still haven't got anything. What are we going to do, Gov? I don't know. Right, yeah. Thanks. What was that? Front desk. Mrs Sutton wants to talk to someone. Mrs Sutton. I'm sorry to disturb you. No, that's fine. What's the matter? You've arrested Craig again? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, you might want these. They're his clothes from Wednesday evening. I thought you'd already given us those. Well, Craig's got several pairs of jeans and T-shirts. I gave you some that had been washed. These I didn't get round to doing. Does Craig know this? No, he's like his father. He assumes things are washed the second they're put out. Look after Mrs Sutton. I'll get these bagged up. Can I ask you why? If it had been any other sort of crime, and even murder. I could find a way round it in my head. But rape. I mean, these women, they didn't have any choice. But I do. What? They're on their way to the lab now. Express delivery. She hasn't got it in her. She wouldn't dare. Wouldn't dare? You make it sound like your mother's frightened of you. You must have threatened her or something. Oh, is that how it works, Craig? When you want something from someone, you threaten them? You know any other way? Your mother could have washed those clothes. She could have binned them, or she could have burnt them. But she didn't. She brought them in here of her own free will. Dad always said she was a stupid bitch! I don't see why you're so upset. I mean, your mother obviously thinks she didn't commit those rapes. That's why she brought your clothes in here, for us to examine. What? Look, there's no forensic evidence on him. It'll prove you're innocent. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So what's your problem? I mean, how can you be angry with your mother for trying to help you? Don't make much sense. Just listen, will you? Craig. No, shut up! <laughs> the point is that it's got nothing to do with her. She should just mind her own business. You're her son. So do I tell her how to cook dinner or clean the house? She should just stick to what she's good at, you know? A woman's place is in the home? Yes, exactly! You don't have a very high opinion of women, do you? They don't have a very high opinion of me! Some of the women I have to serve, they treat me like dirt! No please, no thank you, nothing! You like the way you treat your mum? No, that's completely different! Oh yeah, what, don't you leave her a tip? What? You need 20p on the table's a sign of their respect! It's just insulting! It must really get to you after a while. It's like, one minute you exist, the next minute you don't! It's like, oh, you're still here, are you? Well, yeah, I am, actually! And my spit's still in the soup of that day, you obviously little bitch! I've got nothing else to say. This is where behavioural profiling comes in. You see, Sutton, he's kind of a cross between your classic power reassurance rapist and your anger excitation rapist. Yeah? Well, I don't care what he is, as long as he gets 15 years. What about Watkinson? How would you classify him? Sad. <laughs> Liz, in case I don't get a chance to mention it again, Thanks for all the hours you put in on this case. I've enjoyed working with you. Oh, have you, Gov? I wasn't too sure the way you bumped us off the Sutton interview. Only after I'd got you to wind him up for me. And you'd done a good job on the mum, too. Thanks. I thought it was only plods like Rod's case who needed subtitles. <laughs> Bonnie, what can I get you? Nothing, thanks. 
You all right? Kirsty Bennett's taken an overdose. Her boyfriend's just called. She's on her way to St. Hugh's to have her stomach pumped. Is she going to be all right? Well, what do you think? We got him, Paul. There you go, girls. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs>